welcome to Swangin. I'm your host, Marjorie Bates. On today's program, we'll speak with some elders about dog mushing around the Beaufort Delta. First, we'll go to Fort McPherson, or Tetlege, and speak with one of the Tetlequichin elder, Peter Kay. Peter Kay. And did your family have dogs when you were growing up as a child? Yes, my father had dogs, but they when I was growing up, all I was to here was school just three years, and I came back when I was young. Mm -hmm. Didn't learn much because uh, I think he was he was married three times. You know, the second wife he had were they were like banging off TB. Yeah? Funny thing, you know, when I came home, well. Uh, it just in bed, three kids and that stepmother. In one month time, they're all gone. So after that, uh, we move out of town. It's no kick or those days. We got a pad down to 12 miles down the Husky River Channel. There, they put up camp. And, and that all Blake used to bring in trading out to, from Herschel Island. That's how they, we stayed there. So about a month and a half, well, I got sick. All at once, I can't get out of bed. Just, I must have caught that TB. Yeah. So my auntie, Mrs. Blake, she pick up that spruce comma in the bush. I didn't know she was doing that. Yeah. She come back. Yeah. She melted away, and I got two pieces of canvas. <laughs> I spread it on that. She met two and it just stuck one on me right here and one on my back. Well, it got stuck, it stayed there. Well, I was just like half gone, huh? Well, she done that. Huh? Maybe about a month, about a week and a half, I guess. By that time, I started waking up a little. Pretty soon, I want to play outside, huh? So. I went out, get a little better every day, like. In two months, uh, that thing come right off itself. Since that time, I never get sick, you know. Funny, good story. Uh, TP just took it out. I never get sick all my life. <laughs> so, then uh, I watched my father. He's got dog team and all the people. Huh? How many dog teams he had? Teachers have five dogs. That's all he had. He had five dogs and they raised up. They got three little pups just to grease them up. That's all he used. Those days, uh, people don't use lots of dogs. Yeah. They use four. Five, six is the most. But they have lots of dogs, but they, you know, when they move around, women have three dogs, men four dogs. Like that, that's how they move. And when you move to, you have to get, just put up camp in a place. Eh? You, you gotta have tent and stove and put spruce trees. And, Cut water. All that I learned by my father and people, you know, used to be bad to move around, you know. That's how they make a living, huh? you can't stay in town. Huh? And those days, too, it's hard to get crop or anything. Huh? They just get so much, but they just save it huh? little by little, make it last. 
so it's, uh, and then I watch people got moving around that um, really curious about dogs from the start of my life, you know. I seen then the that was in nineteen twenty five in the fall. So we come up for Christmas. And that Christmas, New Year Day, well I no, it's a dog race. So I wanted to see the dog race. Never seen that before in my life. And here, a bunch of men got down at the end of the town. We seen Joseph Creel in there, got down there. He had six dogs. All this trimmed up, standing there in dog blanket teepees. Every one of those dogs got dog bells on. <laughs> and him too, he just dressed up, huh? Miss String, Big Miss. Well, his, his wife made all that, huh? Good, he had good, smart wife. And I see Peter Luxy got there, he had six dogs, two old yellow, those coalies, huh? And, but him, he just had dog bears, no fancy stuff like that, but, and John Green got there, he's not married. Him too, he had five dogs. <laughs> him too, he's just dressed up like Joe Green, huh? And they went down, way down to the point from there. They don't go by time, huh? They just go one time like that. <laughs> Boy, 1926. You see Joe Green coming up that hill, just like shot up. Buying his high bill. What kind yeah. of dogs did they have? And in him, he had hounds, huh? They were big, six gray ones. And Peter Luxe is quite a ways down, huh? He's coming fast too, but just got away from him. Hard man to beat, another Peter Luxe. This time I seen dogs. Just, I was just a kid that time, huh? About 10 years old. Huh? Since that time, I started thinking about dogs. Finally, I, <laughs> I got dogs at the end. Uh, then, uh, after that, in 1929, my father got a... That's a big company. I gave him stuff to outposts. But seven to mile up the pila. Huh? So he's doing a little trading there in the fall. I get a little fur and then they come down. Christmas, New Year. And right after New Year they went back up. Now they gotta move. If you can stay in there. No. Moose or Caribou. So they went up the Peel River and they went up to Caribou River, they call it. After the break, we'll speak with Charlie Benelsi, or better known as Chuck B. in Fort McPherson. Did your family have dogs when you were growing up? Yes, all my life. Uh, raised up a dog keeper. Okay, what kind of dogs did your family have? Oh, we had big, we had big dogs. Uh. They were husky dogs, but they were bigger. 
Mm -hmm. It don't look like he's raising it up there. Mm -hmm. I just shed one tear with my dad when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And later on, my mother raised dogs for me. But we just shed that one tear mm -hmm. with my family. And what's your mom and dad's name? John and Annie Ivanovsi. And did they raise dogs? Or? Yes, yes, they raised dogs all their life. Um, where did the dogs come from? Like, where did you get the dogs from? Well, it's just like our, our next door neighbor was Peter Kay, and whenever the female hops, well, they give us one. Mm -hmm. and from there, we, that's how the people raise dogs on board. And what did you use the dog teams for? Well, you mostly was for hunting and moving around, trap with them. Yeah, that's what all is. Mm -hmm. And where do you uh, travel with your dogs? Like, where was in your hunting grounds? Well, mostly like on this highway now. We used to travel up to the Rock River. That's where we would get our meat up with dogs. And when we come back with our meat, we go in the bush to trap line to it. What, how long did it take you from McPherson to Rock River if you were traveling by dogs? Well, it, it took us three days for a breaking trailer. We go up, we can go up by the border or else we go up by Richard Crowd. It's 20 miles up. Mm -hmm. There's a route that way, just in case of wind. Mm -hmm. um, how often did you drive with dogs? Like, how many times a day were you driving dogs? Oh, well, it's just every day. Every day we have to try them. To, unless we come by with a load of meat and a different one day or so. Next day we got to haul wood to it. Everything with them. Try them every day. Um, what did you feed your dogs back then, as compared to today? Well, uh, I know my parents used to go in the bush uh, all summer. We make dry fish. And in the fall, we fish on the ice, too. That's what we use for dog feed. And fish? Yeah, fish all the time. Uh, when did you start driving your dogs? Well, as soon as uh, I freeze up, you know, after, say, October, during Halloween, I see everybody coming up and down the river. What about in the springtime and summertime? How did you guys work your dogs when, like in the wintertime, you drove them every day? Yeah. And in the springtime and summertime, how do you work your dogs? Well, in the springtime, I got to wait till I freeze up. I can't drive them in the daytime because it's too hot. Everything's so out, so I've got to wait freeze at night. Everybody travel at night. And, and what about food. the summertime? What do you guys do with your dogs to keep them? Summertime, we just leave them tied up. Uh, we sometimes take them for a run, uh, lose them, uh, uh, try to cure them. We run along the shore. Mm -hmm. So we look after them, uh, water mm -hmm. them. Till fall time again. When did you get your very own team? When I was 16, I, my mother raised five pups early, and they were raised across the river, right across the river here, out of town. Mm -hmm. But they were really mean them dogs. They never see people raising the bush. They were good dogs, too. Um, did you go into any dog races? Yes, a dog team my mother raised across the river. I raised them in the fall. By spring, I had them in the harness. And the next year, I won dog race with them. I won, a, I won second prize. What what kind of races did they have long ago? Oh, that's a long way. It's a little bit too far. We could go down the Husky River. Around, come back up that same pier. That's a long way. From McPherson to Husky yeah. River? And they took them about three hours. Three hours on dog shop. Who had the best dog team in McPherson? Well, there's one from Marty Grad was George Nitchy, he was winning all them dog races. Huh? And then you got this Peter Kay, like Johnny Charlie. Oh, there's lots of them had good dogs. Huh? Can't just to know so not one person didn't yeah. just have the best? Everybody, even the Woodrow's, even the Woodrow's had dogs. Yeah. They had good dogs too. So it was the whole community yeah, that had the Yeah, the whole everybody had good dogs. Yeah. So I don't know who to pick out. Um, how did you dress 
teams for special occasions like for Easter and Christmas, like when you race your dogs in races, or just to show how do you dress your dogs? Well, we used to put that, uh, call it dog blankets, I think it's a fancy little thing on the bag. It's good too, some people use it year round because it keeps the dogs warm to it and it's cooler. They put bells on, maybe wool on the side, and standing iron they call it, ribbons on it. They know it too, when you put that on for dogs, too, they know it. They know it just so good. Yeah. Who made the dog blankets and stand, standing irons for them? It used to be this woman, she died a few years ago, it used to be Florence Peterson. She used to be really good at it, uh, used to make them buy it off her. How she, how, do you know how she made them? Like how? No, I don't know, but it's pretty fancy anyway. Yeah. What, what kind of material did she use? Well, she used wool. Uh, but it's square like that. It's, she got all that wool, I guess, different colors. Like hang on the side, and it's sewed like that. Like some kind of fancy thing on the top too. Did she sew it onto the, the harnesses? or? No, us we do that. Yeah, there's one there. I was, I moved to mountains in January with my parents. We're staying around the Rock River. We're making dry me. And in the spring, we come back to the Cocoa to Radiga. I was coming about 20 miles. I got that snow blind. And I was sitting on the sled and I had that black handkerchief my mother put on my too bright. I had no sunglasses. I was sitting like that. Next thing, I'm not moving. I keep doing it. I can't see, do it. So blind, I can't see. But my sister was ahead of me. Hey, Charlie, I heard that. I said, what? Your dogs are on the way. He said, they're a the wheel dog. The wheel dog, I heard that snow blind. I can't see. I said, bring them dogs back. Fix it up again. I can't see. Too bright, huh? Like this. All the way back. I saw the one. Another one, too. And I went to Hardy Grad with dog team. I was coming back. When I went on that nigger lake, there was a perch like that, and I went underneath it. And then coming back, I had a load of fish and dogs really going. I forgot about that perch, huh? In the face of history of the wind, and bang! <laughs> Just to knock myself out. Oh, good thing that leader, I yell at bells too, I yell as loud as the doctor, he stopped. Holy suckers, I got that bird here. I took that action, I knocked it out. <laughs> We're back with more of the traditional dog mushing. We'll go to Siga Chick and speak with Frederick Blake Sr. and go off to a club to speak with Richard Ross Sr. My name is Frederick Blake and I my hometown is McPherson. Um, did your families have dogs when you were growing up? Yeah, as far as I remember, yeah. And what kind of dogs did they have? They had some kind of husky dogs, you know. Before them, it was bird dogs like uh, hound dogs, Billy and them. Eh? I don't know what kind my dad had. Where did your dad get his dogs from, do you know? He raised them up eh, himself. All those guys. Yeah. What did uh, what did you use the dog teams for? Mostly hunting, eh? trapping. Mm -hmm. Hunting, trapping. And whereabouts did you travel with your dogs? We've been all over the mountains. I was around the Anderson River. Trap there first. And I trapped up this with dogs too. Carry fish, eh? All fish. Mm -hmm. How often would you drive your dogs? Oh, when we trap, we trap, go about every day, except Sunday. Yeah. What about um, when you feed your dogs? What would you feed them? We feed them fish. If we got no fish, we, if we get meat, we got to feed them meat then. Mm -hmm. And what if your dogs had worms? Back then you didn't have any of those fancy medicines or anything like that, but what would you use to deworm your dogs long ago? You mostly use that poplar ashes, eh? That poplar ash is pretty good. What would they do with them? Give them a little bit and eat their food, eh? Mix it in with yeah. the food? Yeah. And that would deworm the... Yeah. How long have you had dogs for, Richard? For, uh... 
about 50 years. What made you start? I, uh, I love dogs and oh, for 50 years ago, that's all there was for transportation, eh? So, uh, so that's why I got into dogs. Did your family always have dogs? Yeah, everybody, the whole uh, Delta, I guess, had dogs. Only way of transportation, eh? And people had dogs. Uh, everybody, the whole Delta. What was your first team like? <laughs> <laughs> they were okay, I guess. Well, they're all just for working, eh? Yeah. So uh, they're all work dogs. And when did you start racing? That was in the late 50s. And how many years did you race for? Until the 70s. And then I got out of it. So for and then I. Years. Yeah, well, it wasn't every year. Eh? I was missed some years, and, and that them days was just all for fun, eh? You know, at Newick first started carnival, and that's where people all gathered, and people went there for to see the carnival, and they had a race, and everybody raced, and it was just for mostly for fun. Do you still race today? No. 1990 was the last time I raced. But you still keep dogs? Yeah. It's just probably for recreation, I guess. And uh, Like I work and I get off work. And here you can't go no place, eh? here in the Clavy. There's no access, no road. So then I have dogs to, that way I get out of the house. <laughs> and how much time do you spend here every day? Well, I spend in the, e in the evenings here, eh? half five o'clock, and I run them some some days and cook for them and feed them. I'm done about ten at night, nine, ten. So about what, three, four hours a yeah. day a night? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever get sick of dogs? No. No, you never did after all these years. No. Still, yeah. How long do you think you'll have dogs? <laughs> Till I die, I guess. <laughs> Are any of your kids interested? No. No? I never bother with them, eh? Yeah. To, to run them, and I just like to do it, so. If there's anybody that was interested in getting into dogs, and they came up to you and asked you, what advice would you give to them? Well, you just have to try and find dogs, and get out and try run them, and look after them good, feed them good. We hope you enjoyed today's program. Thank you for watching Swangin. I'm your host Marjorie Bates and we'll see you next week when we join part two of the dog mushing stories of today in the Beaufort Delta region.